Hello, and welcome to What's Bubbling at Zimbio. I'm Inventor Dan Zen, and in this bubbling, we're going to just take an overview look at all of the updates in Zim 6.6.0. We've had some individual uh, bubbling videos, but this one will just make sure that nothing small gets um, left through the cracks. We'll also talk about the documentation. So let's go to the documentation now. Zimjs.com slash code slash docs dot html and here it is well if we scroll on down there's already a slight difference there's no zim dot shuffle zim dot ran zim dot loop etc in front of all of the the functions uh, nor are they in front of all of the displays we do have obj dot drag etc in front of the methods and then down in the controls uh, once again no sim dot zim dot zim dot and indeed if you open up the open up these things now let's open up a circle say and we come on down a circle is a zim class var circle equals a new circle so no more zim namespace in any of the examples and all of the pre zim fourth methods as well have been uh, removed let's just take a look at those so they've not been removed but they've been removed from the documentation so if you have a hit test reg we used to be able to and we still can say zim dot hit test reg and then two things that you're wanting to test well now we uh, we want to encourage you to place the object here, one of those things, and then dot hit test reg as a method. So before we had or pre fourth uh, zim function. Um, now those pre fourth zim functions still work and they would also work on create JS objects. But now that we've got zimify, which just adds these as methods to create JS objects, I think it's probably easier to just zimify any create js objects or don't even make them in the first place just make zim objects we've now got pretty well everything covered uh, containers bitmaps movie clips sprites all that kind of stuff so um, you may as well just make a zim object but if you're bringing stuff in from from adobe animate you might still want to zimify that oh that reminds me we'll do another bubbling too on this thing called a sprite container uh no a uh vector container sorry on a vector container and that's a way that we can bring things into a zim container but have them come from adobe animate and the create js um, conversion of that into the html5 world okay so uh, that's the documentation changes there and once again, you can, there's ZNS, it's called Zim namespace. If you set the ZNS to true before you load Zim, then it would require the namespace. And therefore you could not just say shuffle. So we'll open up shuffle just so you get that. Right now we can just say shuffle the array. Um, and that's as of Zim 5.5, the Zim namespace is no longer required unless ZNS is set to true before running Zim. So if ZNS were set to true, then you would have to say zim.shuffle here and zim.zim. Zim all the other stuff as well. If you're having any, any concerns over um, the name of these Zim functions, because all these Zim functions now are global functions. So they'll uh, potentially overwrite working with any other scripts so if you don't want that overwriting to happen, then you can help yourself to requiring the, the Zim namespace. Okay, so that's documentation. Let go in, let's go into the updates now <coughs> and just take a, a look at the updates in Zim 6.6. .6. As you can see, there's a fair number of updates. Uh, we just talked about the first one, remove the namespace. Um, from the documentation uh, and so forth and from all the titles as well. Oh, there's also a text doc there. Did I show you that? No, I didn't. Let's go back to the docs. Text. So under the text here, it uh, creates a new intro to the Zim 
docs, which gives an overview. This is found primarily from the control or from the uh, the code section in Zim. Gives an overview of of the documentation. So I decided to put it in here in the text version of the docs as well. And then it goes right into the modules and each of the functions. So the whole of the the documentation is available in text. If you want to import that into a PDF or something like that for instance. Uh, so back to the updates. That's there. And uh, thank you, uh, Vishwas, or however you say that, Vishwas, Vishwas, uh, for the suggestion on that. Zim Squiggle, we did a Zim bubbling on, on Squiggle. That's now like blob, but with a line. So that's new. Uh, it's got lovely documentation on that. Head on back to the docs and type in Squiggle. Uh, I just remembered the squ and hit go. Um, here we are, Zim Squiggle. Uh, we can make a squiggly line. Woohoo! So here's an example line equals a new squiggle. And uh, then we um, can center that on the stage, or that could have been all done in one line, I suppose. And here are the parameters, the color, the thickness, and the points, and the length of the, the line too. So it just sticks a number of points along the length of the line. So if you have lots of points, you might want a longer line. And then the methods and the properties and so forth. Okay, Zim Squiggle is here. Yay, right next to Blob, just before Blob. And so that's part of the shapes, circle, rectangle, triangle, squiggle, blob. Um, those are considered the Zim shapes and they can all be transformed as can the label button, checkbox, etc. Uh, these can all have their colors set and, and stuff like that. So they all work similarly as a base set of shapes. And if you don't like any of those, then you can go to the generic shape thing, which just extends the create just shape way of doing things. Okay, back we go. The button has received some improvements for uh, weight, wait time, all of these parameters. We did a zim bubbling on that as well, so check that out. Uh, that may let you get away with using less panels uh, because you can confirm things right in the button. Now just you wait. Uh, we've got a new thing coming up with buttons. Uh, a new pizzazz is going to be launched. Right now we've got a pizzazz for backgrounds and we've got a pizzazz for icons. Uh, the new pizzazz will be a pizzazz for animations, which can then be put inside of buttons and panes and things like that. So not only can you choose a wait uh, message there in the button, but you can also adjust the background to animate as well. So uh, that's coming up uh, in a new version of Zim in the future. Pain. We've made some adjustments to pain and we brushed upon those in a Zim bubbling as well to add a bar. So that's kind of nice to have a bar for a pain with it. And then a close button and a close color. I forgot to mention the close color so that uh, that can have the color changed for the close button. There, uh, we did adjust the name of the backdrop color. Sorry, this is all pretty tediously tiny, isn't it? Uh, the backdrop color, oh, backing alpha is now backdrop color. So uh, backing really usually refers to the object and the pane. Uh, we, we've referred to the pane as a display and the backing as the backing behind the display, but now we've adjusted that a little bit so that uh, the backing behind the pane is called a backdrop. Uh, so we've uh, let you change the, the backdrop color and if you want to change the alpha on that then you'll need to pass in an RGBA. So we took away just the alpha because we found that hey maybe we wanted a lighter color in the background as we open a pane rather than a darker color. So you can you can do that. There's a uh, darker color with a 0.5 alpha. Here's a lighter color with a 0.5 alpha. And you can reduce that. Uh, we by default, I think it was it used to be at 0.2 or something like that. And you're welcome to use a solid color and then just change the pane dot backdrop dot alpha as well. 
that, by the way, is a CreateJS shape. Um, we did not convert it and, and add to that backdrop all of the Zim methods. There is no real need to do that, so you don't have an ALP available. <coughs> Excuse me. We added Zim hit test circles, so that's there under the docs as well. Uh, hit Enter, that's a test object, hit test rect, hit test circle, singular, so this is different. Hit test circles, plural, so if you have two circles, use hit test circles, they're faster. And if you have only one circle uh, hitting some shape, then use hit test circle. Um, then there's a host of other things that we've adjusted. We added the Zim Preview Audio Sprite, so we mentioned that in a Zim Bubbling as well. We made some changes to the blob. Uh, we used to have a set method, and the set method was obscuring the uh, CreateJS-based set um, method, which allows you to set a number of properties all at once with a, an object. So uh, we shouldn't have done that, um, and we've called it set data, and now we've we've um, sort of put that right across transform, transform blob, and uh, squiggle all have set data, and they all have record data. So uh, they no longer have record. It used to just be record and set date. You know, it was record and set, which sort of made sense. But then when we went to set data, uh, we matched that with record data. So we've got record data, set data, record points, set points. So those are, are now consistent across the board. So sorry for those breaks there. I, I mean, it's not too, too bad. We just launch blobs and transform. So hopefully you don't mind too much, um, but I think that that's now settled. Um, we adjusted the docs on blob to update to a single click edit. We had accidentally left in the double click edit there in the docs. Uh, we adjusted the docs and the blobs points property to indicate different format for setting and getting points. Yes, okay, so when you set the points, I actually forgotten that this was done. When you set the points, you use sort of this, the same format as setting the points in the points parameter. But when you get the points, you're given the actual point objects. But setting the point, there would be no point in, <laughs> no point in setting the points with point objects because you don't even have them. So getting getting the points, you can do it that way, but setting them, you, you set it with uh, the data, similar data as used in passing in the points data to the parameter of the blobs, and same with the line. Adjusted the text area and loader to use zim dot added. Uh, that's helpful. We just we had a bug. Unfortunately, CreateJS does not give us an added to the stage event. It gives us an added event, which says when an object is added to another object, but neither of those objects may be on the stage. So that's what we were using, and, and that didn't work out. So Zim, a little while back, made an added method that pulls, basically sits there every, you know, so many milliseconds and pulls whether the thing's been added to the stage. And that's what the text area and loader do. That's, uh, yeah, we have to be careful with those because they deal with HTML tags as well that need to be updated and overlaid and so forth. We fixed some glitches in the steppers, so... Pardon me on that. Uh, it had to do with the number stepper. If the, if you have numbers, uh, their number steppers can can go through um, lists of of information and step through that. So text information. It can also have a list of numbers and you can step through that. But you can also step through pure numbers. And it was fine for going zero to whatever, but <laughs> found out after when we um, have a minimum set to something other than zero, uh, we were having some problems there on the setting of things. So uh, on specifically setting the uh, current value or something like that. So that's been fixed up. Sorry for that. Uh, added error support for font loading. Um, so that's good. Uh, fix the stepper, right? Did that gave pane an indicator enabled properties like most other components. Good. So we can enable and disable those. 
uh, adjusted text area to have background color of RGBA. So cursor, oh yeah, this was a weird one. I, I didn't notice it until a bit later. Um, for the text area, selecting it would select it in blue, but not actually have a selection box. And if you put your cursor in there, it didn't seem to show the cursor. And I was scratching my head going, why? And it turns out you don't get those things in HTML. That's an HTML tag. Uh, that we're operating on, but you don't get those things in HTML if you set the background color of that HTML tag to transparent. <laughs> so we've set the background color of that HTML tag to an RGBA with very little alpha, and now we have the cursor and the select highlight. So um, that's good. Might actually put that in as an improvement. Yeah, I think I'll update that to an improvement because um, that is an improvement. And uh, oh, uh, zim drag. If you applied multiple drags to the same object, you were actually applying multiple drags to the same object <laughs> with, uh, with them carefully dragging <laughs> the same thing three times or whatever. So now zim drag just uh, makes the last drag applied to it to be the active drag. Uh, we dynamically created an audio tag for the first audio load. I should set that for an improvement as well. Thanks, Bart, for uh, reporting that issue. Um, it's, a, I think, a CreateJS issue, really, on certain iPads, older iPads. The sound wasn't playing at all. Even if you clicked on something, the sound wouldn't play. Um, but turns out, if we add an audio tag, <laughs> that was my guess. It's just like, hey, Bart, why don't you try adding an audio tag to it? <laughs> and then see if it worked on the old, and sure enough, it did. So um, we've now made the first audio uh, added to uh, Zim Load Assets. Uh, create an audio tag, just a sort of a, a non-playing audio tag in there next to the canvas. So um, that will hopefully help on older iPads to play audio. That's good. And that is a summary of the... Summary of the updates here for 6.6.0 has been what's bubbling, and hopefully you'll check out the other bubbling uh, videos about the 6.60 um, update uh, on the Zim Learn site at YouTube. And this has been Dan Zen at Zim, http colon slash slash Zim dot JS. Oh, no, zimjs.com. <laughs> there we go. Uh, I always wanted to have that .js extension, uh, but it doesn't really exist. Okay, ciao. That's uh, what's bubbling.